First United Methodist Church in downtown Champaign on this first Sunday after Christmas. It's great to look out and see all of your faces here. Um, there are announcements in the bulletin. There are also yellow sheets. If you would please fill those out as completely or as incompletely as you'd like. We'd love to know who's here. If you're a first time visitor, we'd like to know as much as we can about you. If you're just a one time visitor in town today only, we'd still love to know who you are. Let's take just a moment and greet each other and get to know each other. Thanks. 
at age or young at heart to join us at the front for children's work. So Jesus immediately went back to Nazareth with his parents, where he grew up in wisdom and in stature, which I'm assuming is height. And anyway, the people 
in the village, bringing white people. So anyway, the deal about this is, guys, you obey your parents, you listen to God, you do your homework, and there is nothing, nothing in this world that you can't do. And for the older ones out there who don't have homework, you do now. It's called the Bible. And the Bible is basic instructions before leaving earth. So, thank you for coming up. And if we could just say a prayer. Lord Jesus, Father of all, thank you for this day and this time. I pray for a hedge of protection around the wall. May you hold them in the palm of your hand and everybody know that you have them. And Lord, now we have kisses from God to hand out. Not just to the children, but to the adults as well. We're going to pass them around and please take one or two. If you know somebody who might need a kiss from God, grab a kiss. And for one person who I can, oh, there she is, can't find here. I was told by God that chocolate isn't chocolate without a nut. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go, darling. So anyway, thank you ever so much, and we'll get these started and pass them on. Thank you. 
scripture lesson for today from Luke chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. The boy Jesus in the temple. Now every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them, and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Do you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human faith. This is the written word of God for all of God's people. Thanks be to God. First, a word of welcome to all, especially those who are visiting with family and have attended worship with them. We send out a special welcome. And I want to thank Sharon. I don't know that I need to preach now. <laughs> she did such a great job. I invite you to be in prayer with me and for me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You who are a rock and our redeemer. Amen. This is a story of searching. It happened during the time of the Passover festival. And the pattern was that if you did not live in Jerusalem, you would walk, not by yourself, but not even with your biological family, but literally with your village and make your way up to Jerusalem. For many, it was a multi-day journey, and the typical pattern would be that the um, men would walk at the head of the group. At the very end of the group were the women. It's kind of like how my parents took us to Disney World. Mom made sure that we didn't get too scattered away from the family. And in the middle was everybody else, including the children. They made their time of sacrifice for the Passover feast at the temple. Then it was time to return home. And it was assumed by both parents that the other knew where Jesus was, probably in the middle of their group traveling together. It was not an assumption that should have been made. They both realized, Mary and Joseph, that Jesus was missing. And so began the three-day search for him. And they found him after the entire pilgrimage group had returned to the temple. He was sitting there among the men listening to the rabbis teach. Jesus was on that break between childhood and adulthood as a 12-year-old. The faith community would accept him as an adult by the age of 13, but already he was listening and offering his own comments as they talked about scripture and talked about faith issues. It was evident that he was no stranger to this pattern. His parents and his faith community had already raised him up in that tradition. He had a grasp of his faith tradition that probably far exceeded his young age. And the 
it said that in verse 47, they were read that um, the teachers, the rabbis, were amazed at his questions and his comments. So Mary and Joseph were searching for Jesus, and Jesus was searching for answers in his faith. And he was helping himself and helping others to help him understand his peculiar and unique mission in God's world. I love this passage, as you probably are well aware. This is the only scripture that we have during Jesus' childhood. And it gives us a very human insight to Jesus' humanity and the dynamics of his family and his faith community, and yet beginning to acknowledge his own divinity. In that passage, we see a modern-day issue of trying to juggle parental responsibilities. It's not an easy ministry. Did you hear that? Parenting is a ministry. So is grandparenting. I think that's got the greatest benefits, though, from what I hear. But parenting is a ministry. And it's a challenge, even on the easiest of days, to juggle your other responsibilities with parenting. And we also understand the importance of communication between the parents. That's not always easy either, is it? We hear the responsibilities of child rearing. And it was clear from our scripture that the family made sure that Jesus was already entrenched in his religious traditions. He's on that brink of adulthood, but yet already spiritual formation has happened and continues to happen. Several years ago, I was in a, an adult Sunday school class of senior adults, and Martha Harder's father was teaching the class. The Cokesbury curriculum for the junior high <coughs> class that particular Sunday asked that class to go visit an adult Sunday school class, and they chose Dick O'Dell's Sunday school class to visit. So there were questions that the two classes together pondered, and then they broke up into small groups. And then afterward, the seventh graders reflected on what they had learned. What brought the greatest chuckle was one of the seventh graders admitted that when he found out they were going to be visiting Mr. O'Dell's Sunday school class, he didn't expect too much out of the adults because he thought if people were still in Sunday school as adults, it must be a remedial class. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> but what that seventh grader learned was spiritual formation is not something that you graduate from. You can begin it at any time. From our scriptures, we hear that Jesus had already begun that in his childhood, but adulthood is not too late, and it continues on throughout your life. Spiritual formation is important for you and I because that prepares us in our discipleship, in our walk with Jesus Christ. It helps us to live out and be clear about our vision and mission as a congregation. So spiritual formation is important for everyone, and Jesus has already set the model for us here. As we think about this passage, with searching in mind, I think it's an invitation to you and I to continue or to start our search. In my very first appointment, um, next door to one of my two churches, lived the oldest member of the community, Carl Jewett. And it just so happened that he was so beloved that they named one of the 
streets in Mazan after him. Mr. Jewett was quite uh, a gentleman, and I found out that he was a member of the, ch of the church but had never attended when I was there. So when I would come and go, I would take time if he were out in the yard, or sometimes I would knock on his door and, to see how he was doing. And others in the church also started doing the same. We kept inviting over and over. And after almost three years, Mr. Jewett came to church. I was so excited, and I think many of the others were excited. But we had one gentleman who was serving, for, serving as an usher that morning. And instead of greeting Mr. Jewett with a lot of enthusiasm, and instead of putting on his hand, hand to shake his hand, he looked up at the ceiling and he said, nope, it's not falling. <laughs> <laughs> the next time Mr. Jewett came to church was within that year. And he came in a casket and I did his funeral. It's a challenge for you and I to realize that we participate in the act of spiritual formation. And all of us have to be on board with that. To come, contribute and to encourage others in their journey and not to judge if someone is not living out their discipleship the same way that we are. You don't know how I wish I could have taken back that moment when that well-meaning usher made that what he thought was a humorous comment. It broke all of our hearts. And it became really hard for the congregation to continue to invite and encourage others. But the thing I want us to remember is that we all need to be on the same page with that. Not to be stumbling blocks to others, but to encourage. It may be they're starting at a different place than we are. And the great thing is, is that they're starting. So I hope that you'll take this as an opportunity to encourage others in their walk with Jesus Christ, wherever they may be. Also, I hope you hear from the scripture that it takes both a family and a faith community to raise up a person in Jesus Christ.